So this is an extremely emergency podcast uh, because we need to talk about the kerfluffle about the fact that Pope Francis may or may not have said that there is no hell. Uh, it's important to note that that's a private conversation that doesn't necessarily change church dogma. Uh, and if you're going to change church dogma, it's a whole huge like rigmarole. It's an actual legal system. Just someone saying something doesn't make it change. So keep that in mind. But uh, you may have noticed uh, several important historians, such as myself, losing their goddamn minds about this. And here's the reason why. Um, in the first place, the church has been talking about the fact that there is a hell since at least around the time of the church's formation. This is something that gets talked about by, you know, Peter and Paul. It's definitely a part of the New Testament. It's something that definitely has to exist within the Christian imagination, okay? Uh, there's no getting around that. The other issue is that, especially at Easter, we need to consider the fact that on Saturday, Jesus is supposed to be really fucking busy, right? Okay, so on Friday he dies. It's a bad scene. No one's happy. On Saturday, crucially, he descends into hell. And this is what's called the harrowing of hell. It comes up in the Apostles' Creed. This is standard, standard stuff, but everyone kind of ignores it because no one wants to think about hell. Anyway, he shows up in hell, gives everyone his best Jesus impression, says, oh, sorry to see you're in hell. And everyone was in hell at this point because obviously Jesus hadn't come yet, so they were all sinning because they weren't Christians. And he's like, come with me, bro. I'm going to get you out of here. Uh, this is a big thing that the church is a fan of because, you know, that their boys like Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, they're all in hell through no fault of their own. They were just pagans. Jesus hadn't shown up yet. What are you going to do, you know? So you need the harrowing of hell in order to get these guys out of trouble. And then lastly, you've got the problem with what happens at the apocalypse then, right? So one of the major things about the apocalypse is that you get the last judgment, okay? So every soul, every soul goes back into its body. Bodies jump up out of the ground. They say, hey, what's going on? And then they go for their last judgment. This means that they go in, their souls are weighed, and then you decide whether or not you go into eternal heaven with Jesus or you go into hell. And that is, you know, you'll remember the video that we did of the door over the church in Rouen, and you see that there, right? You see people getting thrown into hell. And that is exactly what's supposed to happen at the end of the world. So in a linear religion like Christianity, where is everyone going at the end? Everyone's going to heaven? That's completely new. So it changes the game on that. So basically, this is a big deal and a huge reimagining of what Christianity is supposed to mean and why. And you can't just like pull this on everyone. Are you gonna like go tell my homeboy Aquinas that suddenly the way that he was thinking about the world is completely wrong? Like theoretically, every Christian up until this point was like dealing with hell, and now the Pope just said it doesn't exist, so it doesn't exist. Can't just change. The, can't change it this late in the game. That's not how we're playing. That's not how we're rolling. This is not to say that it necessarily matters what you think about whether hell is real or not. I'm not telling you how to live your life. I'm just saying from a historical standpoint and a theological standpoint, it's too real. And, you know, don't come at me like this in Holy Week. I can't handle it. It's not good for my blood pressure.